Now, I've been using Accurai draw runners for many years. In fact, uh, long before I started making videos. Uh, but today, I'm really grateful to Accurai themselves for providing the samples that I need in order to make uh, this video. Now, the runners I'm using are their 600mm uh, 3832 push to open. Now, the reason I want push to open is because it's a bench. I don't want handles on the bench. I want a nice clear uh, bench front because it might get knocked by a piece of wood and the handles will get broken or, or whatever. So, the way push to open works is very simple. Supposing that this is your drawer front here, you push the drawer front and the drawer pops open a little bit and then you can grab hold of the top of the drawer and open it the rest of the way. These are also full opening, so they will open such that the back of the drawer is actually presented to you, so nothing's going to get lost uh, or hidden at the back of all the other junk that you might keep in your drawers. As I said, I've used many of the Accuride runners before, and they come in various lengths. I've used 300mm, 350mm, uh, I've not yet used 700 but they do go up to that level as well, in 50mm increments. Now there are a number of ways to approach the fitting of draw runners. Uh, I have in the past uh, made a template with the various holes in it and then rather than using the runner itself I've placed a template uh, on the place where I want the uh, holes to be drilled, uh, done that and then I can fix the uh, draw runner separately afterwards. You can uh, use the draw runner itself as the template and that's particularly uh, easy if you have this type of uh, drill which has got a, a guide function here, a little out, outer sleeve here which locates uh, where you wish to uh, drill a hole and then you push down and away you go. So if I were to try and drill a hole here for example, and I'll turn it around sideways, uh, it's now centered on the hole uh, quite nicely and as I push so the drill itself goes through to make the hole. So that's very useful. And this one comes from Festool. Now you can use ordinary screws to fix uh, draw runners in place, but I get from Screwfix these draw runner screws. And they've got a, a, a very chunky thread and a, a fairly relatively small head. But when they go through a hole in the runner, you can see they're very low profile. There it is just there. And then sticking through the other side, you can see uh, the screw itself. And these are pretty tough. They take a lot of, lot of beating as far as load bearing goes. And in order to fit those, you need a 5mm drill. And that's what this is in this drill. It's important to note on the anatomy of the draw runner that the, the center piece, the bit that's fixed to the draw itself, when it's closed, sticks out by about two millimeters from the front edge of the frame in which uh, it runs. In other words, the frame which is fitted inside the, uh, the frame of your cabinet. So you need to take that two millimeters into account. Now my draw fronts are 18 millimeters thick, but I want them to be inset by about two millimeters in order to make the appearance uh, nicer and also to ensure that when the drawers are closed that there's absolutely no way that the drawer fronts uh, will get involved with any pieces of wood I'm putting in my vise or whatever. So I want the, the back of the drawer to be 20 millimeters from this front edge, but I need to take into account that two millimeters here. And so I need to mark a line which is 22 millimeters from the front edge, like so. The next thing to take into account is where uh, it should go in this direction. Now, these frames have been made very accurately. This is the bottom, the floor would be down here. And the underside of these drawer supports are what I'm going to use as my datum. And I've got this buckshe piece of wood which I'm going to push up against there. And then I push the runner up against that piece of wood. So that means then I'm now flush with the bottom of my support. And so all I have to do now is to get this on the pencil line there, get that up against the piece of wood, and then I'm going to drill my first hole. And I'm using this drill. <laughs> 
There it is, and I'm going to take one of these screws. And in that goes straight away. And I've just confirmed, yes, that is exactly what I want it to be. So that's my first one done. And I can now move this out, put a second one in. I'm going to put a third one in there. And I need to put another one just here. It's, it's hidden slightly. And that now is absolutely rock solid. That's not going to move anywhere. Now you notice that we've got some sawdust now in here. I prefer, if at all possible, uh, to uh, vacuum up uh, this sawdust at this stage because it, otherwise it just gets caught up in the mechanism. Uh, if you're working on site, it might not be so easy, but just do your best. So there we go, there's that first runner in. And you can see there's that push to open mechanism working like so. Now there's one other thing I want to point out at this stage, and that is on the Accuride website, and actually included in uh, this delivery to me today, there is a very clear drawing which gives you all the dimensions you could possibly need uh, should you be needing to measure things independently of, of the actual gadget itself. And this will come into great use uh, when I come to position these centre bits onto the drawers themselves. When I need to get that located absolutely accurately, I can see where the centre is in relation to the drawer bottom and get it fixed very, very easily. Now, if you're a little bit nervous about getting the forward and back uh, positioning uh, of the main part of the runners right straight away, you can always use these slotted holes. There are lots of them around. And you use an ordinary screw. This is a three and a half millimeter screw. And if it were to screw down into about the middle there, it still allows all the runner mechanism to go past. Uh, and it gives you some wiggle room forwards and backwards. I'm in a lucky position that I was able to judge where mine should go spot on. Therefore, I've used these uh, circular holes with those special screws. Um, because uh, I've got a front frame and I know exactly where I'm going. But if you're in an awkward cupboard and you're not sure, uh, perhaps you're working on your knees in the back of a kitchen cupboard, uh, then this is a good alternative. We can do adjustments uh, up and down, and I'll show you that when we do the actual fixing of this part onto the drawer. You now, having fitted the main part of the uh, drawer runners during the construction process for the uh, bench, uh, the final part actually is now very easy. I've fitted one drawer already, and you can see now that uh, the drawer will come out to almost its full depth and this is over 600 millimeters here it's about 620 millimeters and I fitted the the final part of the runner that's attached to the drawer uh, by removing it uh, you can see it comes out here and on each of these there's a little catch and if I pull upwards on this catch that allows that one to come out and I do the same on the other side and on the other side I push down to release it and out it comes. And these are interchangeable. They aren't left or right-handed. They're completely interchangeable. Just as the main part of the runners are completely uh, independent of whether they're left or right-handed. Now, before we take these parts out, we need to know where they're gonna go. And as you can see on this drawer, they go uh, towards the bottom. Uh, so they're gonna go in this area somewhere, but we need to know how far up they should go, and we also need to know how far from the front. Well, if you remember, during the early part of the construction, when we put the main parts of the runners in, uh, I'd already calculated how far uh, back uh, the main body should go, based on the fact that I wanted a very slight uh, recess here for the draw front. And in order to get the right distance for these pieces from this front edge here, I've got a little trick up my sleeve and I use a plastic spacer. You probably can't see, but it now fits neatly in uh, between this part uh, and this part of the drawer. 
So that's where that fits in. And that gets me the exact amount I need so that the press to close and press to release mechanism can come into play. If you didn't allow for that little bit of spacing there, then that would mean that the back edge of the drawer front would be hard against this part, this front part of the main frame of the runner. And that would mean that you couldn't push it back at all. You need to be able to push the drawer back a bit in order to get that mechanism to work. It needs to be able to push back in in order to release it. So you have to make sure that you have a small gap. And my gap is one and a half millimeters. Now, in order to make a good starting judgment of where this part should fit onto the drawer, uh, imagine that the drawer is gonna be in here and there should be a one millimeter gap. Then if one measures to the center point of one of these holes, and in my particular case, from here to the center of that hole is 23 millimeters. So actually, I would want this to be fixed onto my drawer at 22 millimeters from the bottom of the drawer. That brings the drawer bottom up by one millimeter. So 22. I do need to check the other side just in case there's a slight variation between the two. One doesn't have to worry too much about getting this absolutely spot on at this stage, but it does help to get it pretty much in the right ballpark. And uh, the reason it doesn't matter is that there's a, an adjuster here at the very front and also there are elongated holes for the screws so that you can make adjustments uh, at a later stage. And that's also 23. So I've got 22 at each side for the centers of these runners. And with my draw bottom here, uh, all one needs to do is describe a line at 22 millimeters. And that will be the center line for the screws that go down through here. So with my draw front here, I can now position this and remember I need a little gap between the back of the front part of the drawer and the end of this part of the runner. At this stage I prefer to fit my front screw in a slotted hole with the slot going that way and my rear screw in a slot uh, with a slotted hole going that way. And the reason for that is very simple. It allows me to make uh, any major adjustments at the earlier stage of fitting. And once I then get round to very fine adjustments, uh, I can then use the fine adjuster at the front. I find it easier to use a bradle like this just to make a starting point for a hole. Now the screws I'm using are 16 millimeter long, three millimeter screws. And again, all we do is we introduce the runners back into the slides where they came from. It goes click as it all comes back together again. And let's have a look. It just very slightly tight at the top on this side that I'll do that with a plane. Now, these runners are strong enough that I can do that sort of operation with the drawer just partially open like that with no problem at all. And let's do a check. Yep, that is now much better. Now, I want to get this drawer absolutely perfect. So I'm now going to switch over to the fine adjustment uh, at the front here. And I'm going to put a screw in through the hole here, which is in the center. So that's that screw in. And I'm going to take out the screw that I had in the elongated slot. Because that need not play any part from now on. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. So let's just check the drawer. So as it's slightly tight now at the top, um, I'm going to just adjust it so it goes down slightly. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. So what I've done is I've very, very slightly loosened off the screw that's there. And then using the same size screwdriver, and this is a number one posi drive, I can 
adjust the draw now up and down. You may be able to see it moving up and then down. So clockwise makes it go up and anti-clockwise makes it go down. Now I had it about that position, I wanted to go down a fraction, so I'll try that. And I'll do exactly the same on the other side. So I loosen the screw a tiny bit, and then to make it go up this time, I go anti-clockwise, and to make it go down, I go clockwise. So I want to go down a fraction. And let's just check that. And now that is absolutely super. And now that I'm happy with that, I can now put a few more screws in. I've only got two each side at the moment in the uh, part of the runner that's fixed to the drawer. So I'm gonna put an, a couple more screws in and then that's that drawer done. I thought I should show you this. I was gonna put some uh, removable trays in the top two drawers of the bench. But then I thought, well, maybe I could be a bit cleverer than that. So here's one of the drawers and it will fit in like so, it's the right hand drawer. And when you pull this out, so you see what you see there now. And if you want to get at the stuff that's underneath, you push that back into the drawer opening. So you can get at the whole of everything underneath and this will come back like so. And I've used Accuride soft close uh, runners for this. They're, they're again, the 3832 uh, uh, runners. And, uh, but they're the soft close ones. The actual platform, the, the shelf or whatever you call it itself, is made in the standard way using uh, the mitre corners glued in, taped up, no, no clamps at any stage. And uh, the only modification I had to do was to cut out a little bit of the back of the drawer. Now, I'm not gonna give you any more detail about how to make this bit. I think it's fairly straightforward. Just think it through yourself and you'll manage with no problem at all.